I'm going to go back to the base skin and just to help break it up a little bit more, I'm going to bust out a stencil. And what the stencils will let me do is it'll allow me to paint a repeating pattern over the entire thing very easily without needing to rely on a stamp. So if I turn up the opacity, you'll see this is the stencil that we're using. Drop that back down to 5%, and then if I paint over this, then you'll see we have this repeating pattern. If I hide the dirt, it'll become a bit more clear, so you see that. Now, I probably don't want it to actually be a dark like a dark gray or black, so I'll see if I can play around with some other colors. Maybe a dark green. You know, I think that'll work. So just to make sure you can see the stencil, I'll rotate it sideways, maybe even stretch it out a little bit so it flows with the contour of the tail. There we go. Okay, so I had just recorded an ending to this series and then realized that I had forgotten a couple things. So there are a few aspects of the shader that I'm going to be using for this raptor that I didn't address in the previous video. And that is the light transmission and subsurface scattering. So because this is an organic model and it has areas that are both covered in skin and some that are covered in bone, I need a texture map in order to reflect that in the subsurface scattering material settings. Now in Unity I'm using Shader Forge which uses a light transmission module and also some light wrapping modules to simulate the effect of subsurface scattering. But I don't want that applied uniformly on the model, so I'm going to isolate the bones and have the rest of the object to use that subsurface scattering. So let's create a new layer, make one above dirt, I'll call this one SSS for subsurface scattering. And the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select the bones. So I'll go to the bone layer and I'll go to freeze and freeze painted pixels. And then I will control shift I to invert it go up to SSS and then I will fill the material or fill that layer with black because there should be no subsurface scattering or light transmission of any kind on the bone. Then I will invert the freeze area again and then I will fill that with sort of a medium gray value maybe a little bit on the darker side. And I'll fill the layer. Okay, and then I will deselect everything. So this is what we get. I'm also going to hide the glow layer so that it's not contributing to any kind of emission on this layer. So the reason why we filled the rest of the body with gray instead of white is that we want to have a little bit of control over varying intensities of light transmission. And what I mean by that is that these thin tissues, this webbing here between the, uh, the bone appendages, should be fairly thin and light should pass through it very easily, whereas on the rest of the body, it shouldn't pass through as easily. I'm also going to turn off ambient occlusion for this. That's actually a lot brighter than I thought it would be. That's okay. So what I'll do is I'll go back to my paintbrush. I'll choose a very soft alpha. And I'll start painting in with white. Let me grab my tablet real quick. There we go. And I'll also turn on symmetry for this one. And I'll fill those with white. So these will have the maximum amount of light passing through them. So 
see how it looks on the other side. Not perfect, so I'll disable symmetry and fine tune that. You can also hold down shift to blur the map. Okay, good. Now another thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to pick a darker color and I'm gonna paint over the particularly thick areas of the body, like the torso right here. All right, that should be pretty good. So that is our subsurface scattering layer. Save that, and there's one more layer I need to do. I'm gonna call this one noise. If you watched my tutorial on texturing for node-based editors, this, you may already know what I'm planning to do here, but it's a little different. What I want is that whenever these creatures die in the game, I want them to dissolve. And to do that, I can actually use a texture map to control the opacity. I'm going to use a noise-based texture map. So what I'll do is I'll go to Smart Materials, and I'll hit New. But I'm not actually going to save this, I'll just go to the color here and I'll apply some procedural noise. Now you'll see that this noise pattern is being applied across our model, but it's a little hard to tell what's going on right now because the noise is so big. If I use the magnifying glass to control it, you can see we get these noise values. So once that is taken care of, I can simply fill in the layer and there you go. Now the reason I use the smart material for this is that I can use cube mapping with it and when I do that the texture seams are not factored into account when applying this texture. So I know there are a lot of texture seams especially here around the the connective tissue for the wings but those are not visible in this because of the cube based mapping. So how this will work is that the black areas will disappear first when it dissolves and then the opacity will continue to progress along the lighter value. So the black areas will turn invisible first, then the gray areas, and then the white areas. And that gets us a very interesting dissolve effect for when these creatures die. But I need a texture map here for that to work. So with that, now we know we have all of our appropriate texture maps. So the last thing we need to do is we need to export them. So what I'll do is I'll first export these two that we just made to get them out of the way. So textures, export, color, and albedo map. And then I need to do this twice for every map because we have two different UV sets. So I'll do the body first. Then I'll do the SS, the subsurface scattering. All right, now I'm going to export the color and I'm going to turn on the ambient occlusion, but I'm going to make sure that the glow is turned off. And the reason for that is because the glow will be controlled by a color that I define within Unity rather than what I see here. I only really colored it so that I could get an idea of what it will look like with the color that I'm going to define later. But what I want to be able to do is have the glow animate so that the glow can be on or off and we see the underlying skin when the glow is off. So I'll turn the glow off for now and export the color map. Then I'm going to turn the glow back on and I'm going to export the roughness map. Okay, there's no metalness to export because there is no metal on this character, but we do need to export the emissive power. Now, unfortunately, you can't do that from textures export. There is no option for exporting the emissive map. So we have to do something a little bit different. I know this menu has changed a little bit in version 4.7 of 3D Code, but the procedure should be much the same. If I go to File, Export Objects and Textures, and the first thing it's going to ask me for is to export the model itself. So I'll go ahead and just 
right over the exact same object that I brought in for texturing. And then what I need to do is I need to export not the emissive map because that will actually export the emissive as the alpha channel of some other texture map, but I need to export the emissive intensity. This will give us a black and white map that just has the power or the strength of the emissive channel, but no other information because that's all we need. So I'll hit OK. And that will export both of our UV sets. And then finally, I need to export the normal map because we did paint on some normal details that weren't on the original normal map that we brought in. So I'll go to textures, export, tangent space, normal map. And there we go. That is organic texturing inside of 3D Coat. Once you have all those maps, you can bring them into the rendering engine of your choice, whether that's a game engine or whether that's some other pre-rendered engine like Maya or 3ds Max or whatever it is that you happen to be using. That does it for this tutorial. I hope you found it useful or at the very least interesting. And I will see you hopefully in the next tutorial series. Thank you for watching.